Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Kung sa kayo, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. We will begin with the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by a short prayer. To the esteemed educators of the school's division of Marikina and everyone who is tuning in with us this morning, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our webinar on the use of Math Plus Ops for Blended Learning. I am Dr. Jamela F. Sarmiento, and I will be your moderator for today. To formally welcome us to this event, let us hear from the head of SDO Marikina, OIC of Schools Division Superintendent, Ms. Cheryl T. Gayola. Let us all welcome Ms. Gayola. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Jamela. Magandang magandang umaga po. Good morning, our dear teachers. So, this day is very important for today. It's another great 
uh, opportunity for SDO Marikina uh, to be more prepared uh, for the start of the school year 2020-2021. Uh, we are one month away from the opening of classes. And for this year, we will not be busy preparing our schools. We will not arrange our classroom for our learners. But I guess instead, some of you are preparing an area inside your home or inside your house that will serve as your work area or your classroom. So this is part of our transition to the new normal in education. I know this... This uh, year, school year, will be challenging. It will be a bit challenging, but admit it, it's exciting. So we should all start with the preparation of our hearts and minds that there's a really a need to embrace the new normal. Because once we've embraced the new normal, the rest will be a little easier. Uh, rest assured that we at DepEd Marikina intends to make the school opening more meaningful and relevant for our learners. So we exert all our efforts to ensure that even in this new setup, we will not be neglecting quality because quality education is what our learners deserve. This activity is one among the many initiatives of the Department of Education Marikina City uh, in ensuring that uh, quality education will indeed be uplifted this coming school year. So this training will help our teachers and of course our learners no, na yakapi ng isang subject that is very challenging. I know for a lot of us, uh, we consider math as something that is challenging, but math is really exciting. Math is, math is really enjoyable no? if, if and only if we avoid too much lecture, we, um, we avoid too much work, and we engage our learners in more meaningful, engaging, and exciting activities. So this partnership with Ateneo de Manila University and the Department of Science and Technology will be very helpful for our teachers and learners so that we'll, be, we'll have sort of mo uh, appreciate more math, not as a difficult subject, but an exciting and helpful one. So, dear teachers, enjoy this, enjoy this day, enjoy this opportunity, and make sure that we'll make use of the mathematics application and we'll, make, we'll, we'll exploit the app and ensure that our learners will be guided more to enjoy and love mathematics. So, again, to all of you, welcome and good morning. And, of course, I'd like to thank Ateneo de Manila University for this training and for being with us sa maraming maraming pagkakataon at sa maraming maraming partnership you've been with DepEd Marikina to help our teachers and of course to help our learners. Again, magandang umaga po. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, Ma'am Cheryl. Teachers, are you all excited to begin the school year? So let me first give a short introduction of the Math Plus apps. I will also introduce the project team from Ateneo de Manila University. So Math Plus apps for blended learning. Uh, anytime during our presentation, we invite you to type your questions in the comment section. We will try to answer your questions at the Q&A portion of this webinar. I hope you all enjoy. This webinar is made possible through our project entitled Technology Innovations for Mathematical Reasoning, Statistical Thinking, and Assessment by the MathPlus team, funded by the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technology Research and Development, and implemented by Ateneo de Manila University in coordination with the University of Southern Mindanao. We are grateful to the Department of Education, Marikina City, for organizing this webinar. Special thanks to Ma'am Cheryl Gayola and Ma'am Elisa Cerveza, OIC, Assistant Schools Division Superintendent and Chief Education Supervisor. The project is currently ongoing and aims to create a digital mathematics learning environment 
where Filipino children can learn mathematics and think by and for themselves in solving mathematics problems. The digital learning environment consists of digital mobile applications with accompanying user manuals for grades 1 to 10 mathematics, a large-scale database for assessment, and a large-scale database for statistical learning, or what we call the Censo Escuela Filipinas. This project is a continuation of the DOSTP shared funded project that ran from 2015 to 2018 entitled Development of Interactive Software and Teaching Guides for Grades 7 to 10 Mathematics. The project was aimed to facilitate the implementation of the mathematical objectives raised by the Department of Education's K-12 program through the use of innovative digital technologies. In particular, a selection of application software apps were created for grades 7 to 10 mathematics that covered topics indicated in the five strands outlined in the K-12 program. The design of the apps was informed by an amalgamated framework of the cognitive theory of multimedia learning and mathematical theories of representation. These applications were field tested among students and faculty members from, from private and public high schools. In addition, the team created teaching guides and conducted teacher training in various parts of the country to orient teachers and educators on the use of this application. Now, allow me to introduce the current team members who make up the project. We first have our project leader, Dr. Maria Luis Antonette de las Peñas. She's a professor in the Ateneo Mathematics Department and also currently the Associate Dean of Research and Creative Work in the Ateneo Loyola School. She is a column editor of the Math Tourist for the journal Mathematical Intelligencer. Next, we have Dr. Maria Alva Aberin, who is an assistant professor of the Ateneo Math Department. She's currently a board member of the Philippine Council of Mathematics Teachers Educators, or MathTED. With her is Mr. Len Patrick Dominic M. Garces, a PhD math candidate of University of South Australia and a former lecturer in the math department and economics department of Ateneo de Manila University. We also have Dr. Mark L. Loyola, who is an assistant professor in the Ateneo math department. And yours truly, Jamela Sarmiento, an associate professor of the math department and a former president of the Mathematical Society of the Philippines. Following me is Dr. Mark Anthony Tolentino, currently associate chair of the math department and assistant professor. Next is Dr. Debbie Marie Versosa, a former member of the Ateneo math department and currently associate professor at the University of Southern Mindanao. She's also currently a board member of the Philippine Council of Mathematics Teachers Educators, or MathTED. Finally, we have our project staff and research assistants, Ms. Jen Nicole Kalimlim and Ms. Lara Micaela Torres, who both hold master's degree in applied mathematics, major in mathematical finance, from Ateneo de Manila University. So these are the members of the project team. Now, without further ado, let us hear from Dr. Ninette de las Peñas, who will give an introduction on the use of apps for blended learning. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Luis Antonette de las Peñas. Hello, good morning, Dr. Sarmiento. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning as well to all the teachers who are joining us in this morning's webinar. Kumusta po kayong lahat? Sana nawa e nasa mabuti po kayong kalagayan. So before I make my presentation, I would like to take this opportunity 
to thank Miss Cheryl Gayola. SDS Cheryl, salamat po sa lahat ng tulog na ginagawa niyo uh, so that this webinar will push through. At the same time, I would like to thank Miss Elisa uh, Cerveza, Assistant SDS from DepEd Marikina. Salamat din po, Ma'am Elisa, for organizing this webinar. So we are looking forward to this partnership with DepEd Marikina, Ateneo and DepEd Marikina. And we hope that this webinar today will be a start of a fruitful collaboration together. So let me now bring my presentation to the screen. Uh, one moment. So this morning, I'm going to give you an overview of the Math Plus apps, which we have designed and which could be useful for blended learning. Ever since we started our project in 2016, our apps were designed to align to the official curriculum followed by the DepEd's K-12 program. The math apps address the five strands of mathematical learning. These are numbers, measurement, algebra, geometry, probability, and statistics. Specifically, in mathematics, the use of technology is encouraged. In fact, the CG states, we recognize that the use of appropriate tools is necessary in teaching mathematics. These include calculators and computers, smartphones, tablet PCs, and the internet. Ever since the K-12 program started, and even before the COVID-19 pandemic, the TEPED has already supported the use of technology. For example, through the DepEd computerization program. This program aims to equip schools with ICT, such as laboratory packages and electronic classrooms, to raise the level of ICT literacy and improve the teaching and learning process. Now, driven by the COVID-19 pandemic, the DepEd faces the challenge of transitioning to blended learning. Blended learning encompasses a wide range of learning modalities, including online learning, printed modules, radio, and television. We propose to supplement these options with interactive mathematical applications, or what we call math apps, that may be played at home. The apps have four guiding principles. The apps are free, can be played with limited supervision, are aligned with the depth and most essential learning competencies, and are interactive. The first thing we considered was access. So the apps are free, and users need the internet only one time. This is during download. If a student has no internet access, another option is to copy the files, from one device using wireless transfer or an external device such as USB. Second, we wanted the apps to be ready to use or ready to play. Since students are probably not with their teachers, they should be able to figure out how to use the apps, even with minimal instruction. Further, students can play or use the apps at their own time. Thus, teachers may assign the apps as supplementary material for mathematical learning. The apps were aligned with the official DepCAD curriculum in mind. Aside from that, we talked with teachers, math heads, and principals to ensure that the apps are valuable for Filipino learners. Finally, the apps were designed to be interactive and dynamic. These are unlike static worksheets, 
where students can just do drill and practice. Particularly for grades one to six, the apps were designed in a game-like environment. The idea is that by doing better in the game, children develop a stronger understanding of mathematical concepts. In all grade levels, the apps facilitate exploration, visualization, and justification. The apps also provide instant feedback. Our apps are proven by research. Our studies have shown that students responded positively to the use of mathematical apps and that there is a significant increase in students' performance after exposure to the apps. Our work has been published in several Scopus Index journals. First, we have one that's published in the Philippine Journal of Science, another in the International Journal of Technology and Mathematics Education, and the International Journal of Mathematical Education in Science and Technology. We have provided links in our website so teachers can read the, these papers. So the apps we have designed run in small sizes from 3 MB to 50 MB and can be downloaded and can be played on Android devices. We have two versions that are available. There are there is the Android version and there is the PC version. However, I would also like to say that the Android version can still be played on a laptop or a computer using a free Android emulator, which one can easily download from the internet, such as Blue Stocks and Nox. So all these apps are available in our website. The URL is shown on the screen mathplusresources.wordpress.com. So when one goes to the website, you can see an interface where the apps are designed by grade levels. So what you see on the screen is the, the interface for grades one to six. So you can see that the different topics are stated. So there's numbers and value, place value, addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, fraction and decimals. And the grade levels are there. And one can also check which app will fit your particular most essential learning competency. So let's try to see what uh, one, when one clicks grades one to two numbers and place value, you will see something like this. So you see the app name and a short description. So for example, you see here quick images. So there's a, a short description. It says, this app teaches pupils to move away from counting by ones and to memorize the addition and subtraction facts up to 20. Images are shown quickly and pupils need to determine the number of objects shown on the screen. So here, you see the PC version. Something like this would be the Android and the PC version. And when it's last updated, because you are currently, we keep on updating new versions of the app. So here are sample snapshots of quick images. And there are different levels. So you see the same app but a different level for a particular grade. So at the top of the screen, you see something like this, which app will fit your MELC? So if I click say grade one, I have a table like this. So these are the most essential learning competencies. These are the durations as what we see in the depth uh, curriculum guide. And these are the apps stated here. So one will just have to go to the corresponding app as stated here, depending on what would interest 
the particular teacher. So, the next part of my presentation, I want to talk about this feature. So, this is called Senso Escuela, Escuela Philippines or Senso Escuela Pilipinas. This is a web application which aims to promote statistical literacy in Filipino students from grades 1 to 11. So this idea is adapted from an international project which is now ongoing in different countries, such as the US, the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, and even more recently, Japan. So under the guidance of a teacher, students can accomplish a brief online survey. So here, we teach statistics in a different way using real data because it is the data that will be entered by students as guided by their teachers that we can use to understand and study statistical principles. So one can log in as a teacher, as a student and a guest and create a password using one's email address, such as what you see on the screen. So if you are a teacher, you can manage your classes. So you can enroll your class. So if you have more than one class, you can manage your classes. Then you can view the survey questions, your te the different teaching guides that will be available for different grade levels. And you can access the data, of course. So the interface will look something like this. And you can download the teaching guide. And here are examples of the teaching guides under a particular most essential learning competency. So for example, for grade one, you can infer and interpret data presented in a pictograph without scales. So these are some examples of the MELCS that will be addressed by the teaching guide. So the student home page looks like this so there will be survey questions that will include questions that interest the students so they can uh, answers they can answer the survey and then they can also access a worksheet as instructed by the teacher so for example a survey question could be without having to identify the student name, who he is, he can answer what is his height, his weight, his age, and all of these go into the, the, the something like a, a data bank. And this can be accessed, and one can do a lot of statistical uh, analysis on this data. So something like this, he can also select the worksheet that he or she can download and can access the data. So depending on the grade level, different kinds of mathematical and statistical analysis can be performed on the data, such as tables, graphs, pie charts, and the like. So Dr. Sarmiento earlier mentioned that if you have questions, Please type them on the chat or alternatively, you can contact us in our website. There's a space there where you can include your questions and we will try to reply to you in the quickest time possible. So thank you very much. And at this point, I would like to introduce a colleague Dr. Debbie Versosa, who will be explaining more about the apps and how this will be used for learning.
Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Kanina, napakilala na sa inyo ang mga app at kung saan sila madadownload. Ngayon naman, tututukan natin ang pang-araw-araw na lesson sa classroom. Paano nga ba gagamitin ang mga app na ito para magturo ng ating lesson? Bago tayo mag-umpisa, ihanda muna natin ang ating mga sarili. Tungkol sa math ang webinar na ito, kaya't mabuti rin siguro kung tanungin ko muna kayo. Do you like math? Marahil may iba sa inyo gusto ang math. Pero sa palagay ko, maraming tao ang takot sa math. Mahirap daw kasi. Ano bang sinasabi ng research? Research says, people who do not like math are good looking. O ano, meron pa ba sa inyo dyan na gusto ang math? Actually, syempre joke lang yan. Pero kumakalat yan sa internet. Ibig sabihin, may mga taong nakakarelate. Pero bago natin umpisahan itong app demonstration, buksan po natin ang ating isip. Mahalin natin ang math. Kasi kung tayong mga guro ay ayaw ng math, paano natin maibabahagi sa mga sudyante ang love for math? Now, my next question is, how do you feel about blended learning? Some of you may feel confused. Paano nga ba ito gagawin? Ngayon ko lang to gagawin sa buong buhay ko. Or some of you may be worried. Ang dami kasing module na isusulat. O baka ang iba sa inyo, stressed. Napakaraming webinar tulad nito. Again, open your minds to new learnings. This webinar, shared with you by your division, is meant to broaden your knowledge about strategies to cope with the challenge of a new normal. So let's begin. Let's start where you are. This is probably your main issue right now. Paano ba ituturo ang MELCs or Most Essential Learning Competencies sa panahon ng blended learning? To help you, our team posted the MELCs in our website. So ito po ang website, makikita ninyo, pwede kayong pumili ng grade level na tinuturo ninyo. Pag-click ninyo, may makikita kayong Most Essential Learning Competencies at katapat nito ang mga apps na tututok sa kanila. May apps din for review. Kasi na, mapapansin nyo, di ba, may mga bata, hindi pa talaga sila handa para sa lesson na ituturo ninyo. So, ang apps na ito for review ay pwede nyo gamitin para sa kanila. Ang unang app na ipapakita ko sa inyo ay ACMA para sa grade 1. Maniwala kayo sa hindi, by week 5 or 6, dapat kabisado na ng grade 1 ang addition and subtraction table. Ang problema, marami sa kanila, hindi yan nakakabisado at, syempre, madadamay ang mga competencies sa grades 2, 3, 4. Eh, syempre, pati na rin ang grade 5. So, ang quick images, para po yan sa grade 1, pero kung meron kayong sudyante na ganito pa rin mag-isip, paisa-isa pa rin, palagay ko magagamit ninyo ang quick images para sa review. Ito po ang itsura ng quick images app. Nakabatay ito sa 10 frame. Napatunayan na sa ibang bansa na epektibo ito sa pagtuturo ng addition at subtraction. Also, from my own personal experience, nagamit ko na rin ito sa Pilipinas. So, ang 10 frame ay binubuo ng 10 butas. Ayan siya. Pwedeng lagyan ng 10 bilog. Okay? At dahil nakagrupo sa 10, nasasanay ang mga bata na tumingin sa number na hindi pa isa-isa lang. Nakikita niya ang mga groups of 10. So subukan natin. I will show you some dots very quickly. Kaya nga, quick images ang pangalan. Your goal is to find out the number of dots. Pwede kayo sumagot sa papel or sa isip o mag-post ng comment. Maigi rin kasi mapaglaruan ninyo at makaparticipate dito sa app na ito para malaman nyo rin ang pag-iisip na gagawin ng sudyante ninyo habang naglalaro sila. So subukan na natin. Ito po ang quick images app. Subukan natin yung 1 to 10 at normal speed. Alalahanin ninyo, alisto tayo ha kasi may makikita kayong dots pero mabilis lang. Bakit mabilis? Para masanay ang bata na hindi magbilang lagi ng paisa-isa. So let's play. Okay, mawawala yan. Ilang dots yon? Okay, so 7, 3. So ganito po ang quick images app. Kung hindi nyo nakita, we can show again. Ayan. We have a scoreboard here. Nandito po yung timer. Okay. 
Subukan naman natin yung 1 to 20 at fast speed. Mali pala. Subukan natin ulit. Okay. Mukhang simple lang ang Quick Images app, but there is a lot of thinking involved. For example, in this problem, may ma ang ibang bata ang makikita niya 1 and 6. Ang iba naman ang makikita niya may tatlong butas, kaya may isip niya 10 minus 3, kaya naging 7 ang sagot. Sa problem naman nito, ang sagot ay 14, 4 and 10, 14. Maniwala kayo sa hindi, may mga batang hindi nakakakilala na ang 10 at 4 ay 14 pala. Sa katunayan, nung gumawa kami ng research, pinakita namin itong mga drawing sa mga bata, ang 20, 14, at 18. At natuklasan namin na mas marami ang nakakakilala sa 20 kaysa sa 14 o 18. So, ayan siya. Ibig sabihin, hindi malinaw sa mga bata na ang 10 at 4 ay 14 pala. Kaya hindi katakataka na marami sa kanila ang paisa-isa pa rin magbilang. We really need to strengthen students' thinking of groups of 10. Sa paglalaro ng quick images, matutugunan din ang MELC na dapat ma-visualize ng bata ang addition at subtraction. Paulit-ulit lumalabas ang visualizes sa MELC. Ngayon, hindi na kailangan na mag-lecture tayo na o oh, mga bata, ganito mag-visualize ng numbers. Sa halip, sa pamamagitan ng paulit-ulit na paglalaro, matututunan na ng bata ang mag-visualize at kumila kumilala sa groups of 10. Isa pang topic na paulit-ulit na makikita sa elementary ay place value. Makikita nyo yan dito. Mula grade 1 hanggang grade 5. Gusto ko lang bigyang diin. Sa competency, may tinatawag tayong place value at value. Karaniwan, ang naituturo lang sa bata ay place value, hindi value. Ano nga ba ang pinagkaiba nila? So, let me show you an example. Normally, ang itatanong lang natin tungkol sa place value. What is the place value of the digit 4 in this number? Tapos, ang sagot ay hundreds. Place value po yun. Pero mahalaga rin malaman nila ang value. Dapat alam nila na sa number na ito, ang 4 ay nagsasagisag ng 400. Ang value niya ay 400. At mas, mataes, at mas mataas ito sa value ng 7 dahil 70 lang ang sinasagisag ng 7. Okay, mag-participate tayo ha. Madali lang naman. 10 plus 10. Okay, 20. O plus 10 ulit. Plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. Madali lang, di ba? Kahit mga bata, parang na-memorize na nila yan. 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. Ngayon, subukan naman natin ito. 64 plus 10. Tapos plus 10. Bilisan natin ng konti, ha? Okay, 84. Ngayon, plus 10, plus 10. Plus 10, plus 10. Kung ginagawa ko itong activity sa klase, pinapaikot ko ang mga bata, tapos isa-isa silang sasagot, 74, 84, 94, maraming pumapalya sa 104 at magtatawanan kami dahil ginawa nga namin siyang laro. Okay. Ginagawa ko to sa klase kasi gusto kong malaman ng mga bata na tuwing nagdadagdag tayo ng 10, nababago din ang tens digit. At may app tayo para dyan. Ang app na yan ay ang frame game. Siyempre, sa lower grade levels, medyo mahirap pa sa kanila ma-visualize ang 34 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. So, dyan papasok ang frame game. Tingnan natin. Let's play. Okay. So, here, meron tayong current number, 99. At makita nyo, 99 yan. Ang target number natin ay 81. Ang iisipin natin ay ano ang pipindutin natin para makarating tayo sa 81. 
99. Pag pwede tayo mag minus 1. At makikita natin dito, 97. Halimbawa, we have 9 tens and 7 ones. So, lumalabas din ang value, hindi lang place value. Matatagalan tayo siguro kung mag minus 1 lang tayo. So, mas mabilis siguro kung mag minus 10. Tapos, minus 1. Yan. Ulitin natin. Ma medyo malayo-layo ito. Nasa 6 pa lang kasi tayo, ang kailangan natin ay 78. So, matutuklasan ng bata na mas mabilis kung magdagdag ng 10 kaysa magdagdag ng tigwa 1 lang. At makita rin natin na tuwing nagdadagdag ng 10, nababago rin ang 10th digit. Ayan. 66, 76, plus 1, plus 1. So, yan po ang frame game. Another related app is the grid game. So, let's play. Okay. Halos makita nyo, pareho lang sa kanina. Meron tayong target number. Ito po ang ating current number. Mabilis lang ito dahil halos magkatabi lang sila. 79, papuntang 89. So, plus 10. Okay. Okay. Mukhang swerte tayo ngayon. Na, oh, plus 1. Ay, bali, baliktad pala. So, ang target number ay 76. Nandito tayo sa 78. So, minus 1, minus 1. Okay. Yung target number natin ay 56. Ayan siya. Okay. So, ganito po ang grid game. Okay. Meron din grid game para sa mas malaking number. Okay. Kung matut makikita ninyo, dumami na ang buttons nyo. Meron ng plus 100. 495, paano tayo makakarating ng 972? Mas mabilis siguro kung mag plus 100 tayo. At habang ginagawa natin ito, makakita natin na nagbabago ang digit sa hundreds place. Plus 100, plus 100, plus 100. Okay, we are now at 995. Minus 10. Makakita rin ang epekto. Pag nagma-minus 10, umaakyat. Minus 1, papunta naman sa kaliwa. Hanggang maabot natin ang target number. Meron ding grid game para sa decimals. So kung nagtuturo kayo ng upper elementary grades, magagamit natin ito. Subukan natin. Okay, so ang target number ay 9.97. Nandito pa lang tayo sa 2.52. So mag plus 1 muna tayo hanggang umabot tayo sa 9. Ayan, nandito na tayo sa 9.52. Para umabot sa 9.97, we have to add 0.1 or 1 tenth. Okay? And then, ayan. Meron ding grid game para sa integers. So, subukan natin. Ito po siya. 71 to negative 52. Kahit teachers na tayo, palagay ko mapapaisip din tayo. Ano ang gagawin natin para itong negative 52 makarating sa target nating 71? Okay, pwede tayong mag -plus. Hanggang umabot tayo sa positive. Nasa negative 2 na tayo. Kung dagdagan pa natin ng 10, positive 8 plus 10, ayan, hanggang 71. Pagdating dito, pwedeng mag plus 1 na tayo hanggang 71. Okay. Inihikahit ko kayo na paglaruan ang mga bawat menu item dito. Ang nagawa pa lang natin ay explore. Meron din kasing warm-up. Ano namang pinagkaiba ng warm-up? So, bumalik muna tayo sa whole numbers. Ano ang warm-up? Halos pareho sa kanina, ito lang ang nagbago. Merong moves left. So, kung galing tayo sa 13 at papuntang 64 at biglang nagkamali tayo, nag-12 muna tayo, ganyan, bago tayo pumuntang 64 plus 10, mapapansin niyo we only have one move left. Pagdating dyan, out of moves. So dito, mapipilitan tayong mag-isip, what is the most efficient strategy to reach the target number, in this case, 64? So we have to add 1 and then add 10 until we reach the target number. So that's one strategy. Okay. Ano naman yung advanced? Sa advanced, ayan na. Wala na yung number sa grid. So, medyo mas makakatulong ito sa pag-visualize. Again, we're aiming for visualization. So, from 20, how do we reach 11? 
there are only two moves. Kung nag minus one ako, hindi ako talaga aabot ng 11. So, kailangan makaisip ako ng ibang paraan. So, 20, paano makaabot ng 11? Isipin muna natin. Hindi talaga pwedeng mag minus one kasi 18 lang. Okay, we can do minus 10. So, 10 na yan, plus 1, 11. And finally, for the challenging level, we have this. Wala na po ang grid. So makikita ninyo from concrete to abstract. So ganyan naman talaga ang pagtuturo ng math. Challenging itong problem na to because we only have two moves left. Current number is 13. The target is 4. Pag nag minus 1 tayo, tiyak mauubusan tayo hanggang 11 lang. So ulitin natin. 13 to 4 with only two moves. Okay, so subukan natin mag minus 10 plus 1. So yan po ang grid game. Isa pa pong competency na paulit-ulit sa MELCs ay arranging numbers or comparing numbers. So makita natin yan mula grade 1 hanggang grade 6. At may app din tayo para dyan, ang ordering game. Let's now play the ordering game. So, subukan muna natin whole numbers 1 to 6. Easy. Okay. So, roll the dice. Okay. Sa umpisa, siguro, mag-explore muna ang bata. Ano bang pwedeng gawin? Nakalagay naman, drag. So, mag-drag tayo dito. Halimbawa, okay, roll the dice, 33. Kung maglagay tayo dyan, may nakalagay incorrect order. Ibig sabihin, ayaw niya nandito ang 33 dahil mas maliit ito sa 51. So, pwede siguro natin ilagay banda rito. 41, mas malaki ito sa 33, so hindi yan pwede dito. Dapat ilagay natin siguro banda yan. Okay, 36, nako, ito ang problema. Wala na tayong paglagyan, so hindi na natin siya magagalaw. Ito na lang, 63. Ayan. Okay, 12. Kung mapapansin ninyo, meron ditong rolls remaining. So, dapat mabuo natin itong lahat bago maubos ang rolls remaining. Tingnan natin kung magagawa natin. 62, pwede. Ito. 36, walang paglalagyan. 63, wala. So, skip. 56, walang paglalagyan. Tingnan natin kung hindi tayo maubusan. 15. So, the ordering game also practices estimation skills. Okay, isa na lang kailangan natin. We have 10 chances. Okay, 42. Okay, so we win. Okay, there is also an ordering game for integers. So upper grade levels, pwede. Okay, subukan naman natin yung challenging. Ano pinagkaiba nito? Tingnan din natin yung 0 to 9 na digits. Sa challenging, there are only 10 rolls given. Kailangan within 10 rolls, mabuo natin to. Tingnan natin kung kaya. Okay, negative 25, negative 52, itong pinili ko. So, Ganito lang po ang paglalaro ng ordering game. Okay. 44, mas malaki sa 43. Pwede dyan. 42, walang paglalagyan. 24, walang paglalagyan. Delikado na po tayo. 22, wala. So mukhang hindi natin ito mabubuo. Tignan lang natin. Negative 4, saan nga ba ito? Kung dito, incorrect order. So pwedeng dyan. Negative 35. And wala na. No more. Rules remaining, therefore we lose. Okay. There is also an ordering game for fractions, pero siguro ngayon wag muna tayo mag-challenging. Subukan natin ang fractions. Sa fractions, meron ditong panel na dyan yung makakita ang picture ng fractions para matulungan din ang bata. Again, we're helping them visualize. So let's say we put one-third here, three-fourths, mas malaki or mas mahaba siya sa one-third. So pwede natin ilagay dyan. 2 fourths, nasa kalagitnaan ng dalawa, okay? So, we're still ordering numbers. 3 fifths ay mas malaki sa 2 fourths, pero mas maliit sa 3 fourths. Ang problema, wala na po tayong space, so hindi natin magagawa ng paraan. Okay, 2 fifths. Pag dito, hindi pwede. Ayan, makita natin, ang 2 fifths ay mas mahaba sa 1 third. So, we just continue until we complete everything. Ayan siya, 1 six. So we can scroll down, makita natin. 
Okay, we still have 8 rows remaining. Kailangan natin mas mahaba sa 3 fourths. Ito po ang 3 fourths. So, hindi yan. Okay, mas mahaba sa 3 fourths. So, wala pa rin. Okay, again, ito po ang 3 fourths. So, sa kalalaro nito, mapapractice din ng bata. Ano po ba ang itsura ng fractions? Nako, delikado. We only have one row remaining. So, wala na po talaga. So, that is the ordering game. The last app that I will demonstrate for you is called the matching game. Again, tinututukan nito ang visualization, a very common verb in the MELC, visualizes. So, subukan natin, whole numbers, match number with picture, ayan. Makita nyo, babalik na naman tayo sa 10 frame kasi gusto talaga natin na masanay ang mga bata to see in groups of 10. So, 8, hanap tayo ng partner ng 8, ito po ang 8, 2, 2. Makita natin, may timer. Dapat matapos tayo bago matapos ang timer. So, ito siya. Okay. Meron din tayong matching game for fractions. Okay. So, tignan natin. One-fifth. One-fifth. Kung nagkamali tayo, ganito po yung mangyayari. We just give, we're just given another chance. Okay. Ano ba ito? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 eighths. Ayan. Okay, 5 tenths. Pag nagkamali po, yan po ang mangyayari. So, ito. <coughs> Meron din po tayong decimals. So, higher elementary grade levels. 0 0.26 or 26 hundreds. Hanapin natin ang tamang visualization niya. Ito siya. 0 0.93. 0 0.17. So, hindi ko na po tatapusin. At least alam na natin ang nagagawa ng matching game. Pero hindi lang po pag-match ng number with picture. Meron din pong target sum. So, halimbawa, kung whole numbers, target sum ay 10, tingnan natin ano ba ito. Ibig sabihin, maghahanap tayo ng Paris na yung pag in ninyo, ang sagot ay 10. Kung 4 at 5, 9 yun, kulang. So, hindi po yan tama. Maghanap tayo ng magiging 10. 5 and 5. 2 and 8. 3 and 7. San po dito ang 7? Ito po. 1 and 9. So, dapat matapos tayo bago matapos ang timer. 6 and 4. 4 and 6. So, yun po. Meron ding fractions, target. Pwede ring numerals lang, hindi na kailangan ng picture. So again, meron tayong concrete and abstract versions. So the target sum is 1. We have 3 thirds and 0 thirds, 1 half and 1 half. If you add, it's 1 and so on. So again, I encourage you to play around with the menu kasi doon yung malalaman ano yung mga pwedeng gawin sa app na ito. Pwede nga mas maraming cards and so on. Yan na po ang ating demonstration. Hindi ko na po iisa-isahin ang lahat ng features kasi pwede nyo naman paglaruan para makita ninyo kung ano yung mga lahat ng features na nandun sa mga app na yon. Paglaruan nyo na lang po sa sarili ninyong oras. Pero palagay ko na ipakita ko na sa inyo ang mga pwede niyong baguhin sa main menu para malaman niyo ang mga topic kung saan pwedeng gamitin ang apps. Now, I want to revisit the question that I asked at the start of this webinar. How do you feel about math? Hopefully, you now have a more positive experience or view about math so that your students will also have a more positive feeling towards math. In fact, kung nag -e enjoy sila, hindi niyo na sila kailangang pilitin. Math concepts can initially be learned not through lectures but through experience and through play. I want to share with you the words of Francis Su, the former president of the Mathematical Association of America. He said, mathematics makes the mind its playground. Do doing math properly is a kind of play. Math is not about memorizing formulas or at least that's not where you start. When you learn any new idea, you play with it. So let's take this challenge. Blended learning may be difficult because it's new, but it also pushes you to learn new things. Kung sa classroom nakakapaglaro kayo ng games, pwede rin pala ang games sa blended learning. Ang mahalaga, ang mga games sa ito tumutulong para tumatag ang mga math concepts sa utak ng mga bata. So let's do this. 
Sa ngayon, marami ka pa kaming mga ginagawang apps. Halimbawa, para sa frame game, yung kaninang mga may mangga, gumagawa rin kami para sa larger numbers. Magkakaroon din po ng frame game para sa coins and money, which is again another common, um, common team in the MELCs. Pati sa ordering game, gusto namin lakihan pa yung numbers, hindi lang hanggang 100. Meron din kaming apps para sa multiplication, factors, divisibility, geometry, statistics, at iba pa. Kaya ang payo ko po sa inyo, please visit our website regularly kasi i-upload po namin ang mga apps pag gawa na po sila. So with that, thank you for your attention. And I do hope you play the apps yourselves because you are the best person to know how to integrate them into your own blended classroom. Good day to all of you. Thank you very much, Dr. Debbie Marie Versosa. And kumusta kayo? Are you excited to use the apps for the coming school year? Greetings pala from Nangka, Marikina. So dito po kami nakatira. Maraming faculty members ang nakatira dito sa Ateneoville sa Nangka, Marikina. We are now in the question and answer portion of our webinar. May I request Dr. Minette de las Peñas and Dr. Versosa to be on stage. Thank you, our dear participants, for sending your questions. So we'll try to answer your questions. Do we have our first question now? The first question is, how can we download the apps? Oh. Dr. De Las Peñas, please answer the question. How can we download the apps? Uh, First, as explained earlier, you can go to the website and it depends, no? Kung ang gamit po nila, i tablet ba or, or cell phone or laptop ba or computer. So, kanina may napakita akong uh, slide na may icon na parang uh, computer desktop. Yun po yung version kung ang gamit natin a computer or laptop. So, kung ita-download natin yung folder, so nakasip yon. pero kung ang laptop or computer natin eh, may meron namang pang-unzip, no? So, may mga lalabas na file. Ang hahanapin po nila yung nakalagay na point .exe, no? So, in other words, yung ita-download nila yung executable file. So automatic na po 'yun magpe-play sa ano sa computer or laptop. So minsan uh, of course kung medyo ma mahina lang yung internet, it will just take some time pero hindi naman ganun katagal. So pero kung ang gamit po ay cellphone, just click po yung isang icon doon and automatic it will run now in your cell phone or your tablet. So those are some uh, ways, no? And again, I wanted, I want to emphasize what I said earlier in, in my presentation, that even if you have a laptop, you can still download the Android version. However, may tinatawag po tayong emulator. So yung emulator, kanina nabanggit ko din sa talk ko, like, uh, Blue Stocks or Knox, pwede rin po yun i-download sa laptop. Then yung app version, pwede rin yun play. So I hope I have answered the question, Dr. Sarmiento. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. De Las Peñas. Uh, we will also come up with a, a video on how to download uh, these apps through our website. Our next question is, my phone is not so high-tech and sophisticated. Can I download the app CCD? Dr. De Las Peñas, again? I think, yes, there should be no problem because 
the apps actually run in small memory, so you can download it to your cell phone. Uh, kahit uh, hindi naman masyadong sophisticated yung phone. So actually, when we were designing the apps, we made sure that this would be the feature of the apps because we realize and we are aware that not everyone has a sophisticated phone. And we like to, to make the apps as widely reach, reached as possible. Yes, thank you. Next question, please. Can we use these apps in doing our activity sheets? Dr. Versosa, please answer the question. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, you can use the apps in the activi activity sheets that you will be writing. I think all you have to do there is um, explain the instructions to the students how they can download the app. So give the app name, for example, if you want them to do the quick images game. And probably you can also give a screenshot so that they know what app to download. And then, of course, try to encourage them to play as many times as possible because that's the um, best way for the app to be more effective. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Versosa. Dr. Versosa is currently in her university in Mindanao. She said there are so many people in the office now. That's why she's wearing mask. Next question, please. Oh, will there be apps for all the quarters? Dr. Versosa? Uh, if you check the files in the Word Pre uh, Math Plus website, you'll see that um, in almost uh, in all the quarters there will be an app but not all topics will will have an app uh, maybe okay. I can also add dr Sarmiento yes please so when when we were also designing the apps so and when we were uh, also uh, reading through the curriculum carefully we also recognized that not in every topic it would be the best way to incorporate technology so uh, technology is very important in mathematical learning as uh, several studies show but the, the the best way to include it in the lesson is also a, a thing to consider so this is to add to what dr versos has said yes thank you Let's now go to our next question. Ah, may nasabi daw kanina that the apps will help develop learning if used frequently. How often would you recommend using the app to the students? Dr. Versosa? Um, palagay ko, hindi ko masasagot yan na halimbawa sabihin ko dapat 5 hours per day. Ang masasabi ko lang po ay um, hikayatin lang natin ang sudyante na gamitin sa Tapos siguro, pwede natin sabihin, o bukas gusto ko malaman kung ano yung score mo. Tapos i-follow up lang po natin. Tapos I'm hoping na sana kung nag-enjoy naman sila ng app, medyo laruin nila yon ng matagal-tagal. But probably 30 minutes for an app. That, that must be a significant amount of time already. Okay, thank you. Next question, please. Can the apps be used for assessment? Dr. Versosa, please answer. Uh, it's really up to the teacher. If you want to use the app for assessment, maybe you can ask your students Oh, ano yung score na nakuha ninyo? Kung gusto ninyong i-consider yon as part of their official grade, pwede niyo pong gawin. So, depende po yan sa inyo. Um, gusto ko lang din pong banggitin na later on, sa dulo po ng at, aming project, may, mag, may ginagawa rin po kaming assessment. So, kung bantayan niyo po yung aming website, malalaman niyo po na meron din tayong assessment app. But of course, you have the freedom. Yung mga apps na pinakita ko po kanina, pwede niyo pong gamitin as assessment.
pwede ko din idagdag doon. Thank you. Sa sinabi po ni... Pwede ko din yes, idagdag please, Dr. Dr. Sarmiento and Dr. Debbie Versosa. Yung sinabi ni Dr. Versosa kanina na abangan po nila yung assessment uh, database na, na magiging available sa Math Plus resources. Kasi may mga iba-ibang assessment po dyan, depende addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, na pwede din later on. Uh, so, bibisita lang yung teacher doon sa part ng, ng ating website. Magkakaroon po kami ng link doon. So, ganun din po yung sa census na pinakita ko kanina. Doon pa rin yung sa Math Plus resources maa-access. Thank you. Our next question. I'm not used to teaching with technology. Do you have some tips for me? Maybe you can begin answering, Dr. De Las Peñas. Uh, magandang tanong po yan. So, kasi sometimes, no, uh, lalo na uh, um, ang daming apps ngayon, minsan nakakalula as well, no? Ano ba yung uh, gagamitin natin? So, tingin ko naman, uh, it's just, of, of course, no, uh, as mentioned kanina by Dr. Versosa, it will help na tayo mismo. Eh, laruin din muna yung app, no? Okay, so when we download it, we can play with it. And then uh, we can also look at uh, the different uh, tips and videos that we will be posting that will guide everyone no? in using the app. Uh, meron din, like, like itong talk ngayon, uh, magiging available to dito sa, dito naman sa YouTube uh, channel ng Math Plus Resources. And hopefully, we're going to uh, give uh, more videos that will guide teachers. So, and another thing as well that I probably would like to say is gusto ko din imbitahin yung mga iba-ibang teachers na nakikinig ngayon. So, kunyari, kung uh, marerecord nyo po yung sarili ninyo uh, using kahit po Zoom or Gmeet, tapos gagawa kayo ng lesson using the app, please feel free to share it po. Share it so that the other teachers, pwede din nila makita yon. Uh, so maybe uh, we helping one another in this way, uh, we can help. So kung meron tayong a little, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are a little anxious about how to use technology, then we can help each other with this respect. And as I also mentioned earlier, dun po sa amin, contact us sa website. Kung meron lang po tayong problema, message lang po kayo dun and we'll try to get in touch po with you. So maybe uh, Dr. Versosa or even Dr. Sarmento can add to what uh, I have mentioned. Dr. Versosa, do you wish to add um, something? Siguro, ulitin po, ko lang po yung sinabi ni Dr. De Las Peñas na the best way to teach with technology is actually to play with it, to learn it. And maybe you can try it with your own family members first. Makita ninyo paano nila laruin. So siguro yun po yung masasuggest. Thank you very much. Now we are down to the last question. How many times should I ask my students to use the app? Dr. Versosa, please answer the question. Um, kanina po, nabanggit ko na may mga MELC or competency kung saan magagamit natin yung app. Pero... Palagay ko may experience kayo, may mga sudyante kayo na kahit grade 5 or grade 6 hindi pa nila na aatin yung competency ng lower grade. So I would suggest na even for higher elementary students, you can encourage them to try using the app. So I mentioned earlier, as many times as possible. And we really designed the app so that they will be more like a game para hindi yung tipong pipilitin yung sudyante ninyo na maglaro. So my answer to that question is, as many times as possible because many students, as you know, they need more review and training. Okay, so, yun po. Thank you. Do you wish to add something, Dr. Delis Penix? 
Okay? Okay na? Okay naman, yeah. Okay. So that ends our question and answer portion of this webinar. If you have more questions, then you can send us an email through our website and we will try to answer all of your questions. So that wraps up our webinar. On behalf of our project team, thank you very much for your active participation. Thank you for actively commenting in, yeah. And also thank you very much to Ms. Cheryl Gayola and Ms. Elisa Cerveza for giving us a chance to share our apps, okay? We hope that you've learned some apps that you can use in your classes. So visiting our website is the key for more apps. Send us an email if you have any questions and if you want us to explain the apps in more detail. The coming school year will be challenging, but I hope it will be very exciting for all of us. So I wish you all a pleasant day. Good morning. <laughs>